like I said, stay healthy. Okay, everybody sees the screen, right? Yes. Implicit differentiation. What does it mean to say implicit? Huh? What is the opposite of implicit? Explicit. Okay, you will know what it is after we start this one. Okay, objectives. The objectives are as follows. Number one, introduce implicit differentiation and then split a relation that is not of type functions into two or more functions and determine the slope of graphs of relations at any point on the graph. So these are pretty much okay. Now we have a couple of functions that I want to show you. Okay. What kind of function is this one? Can you tell me the equation for this function? Good, good. Y equal to x squared or f of x equal to x squared. I mean, it's very clear from here, right? See, this is negative 3 for x, y is 9. Negative 2 for x, y is 4. So it's very clear that it is y equal to x squared. Okay, that's this function. Now I want to go into what I call spinning of a graph. So you know what spinning means, right? Huh? Spinning an issue. Yes, yes, very good, 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 good. Great, okay. So now we have the same graph I showed you, which is the graph of the function y equal to x squared, okay? We're going to go ahead and put adjacent to it another another graph. Can you tell me what kind of graph is this one? Describe this graph for me. Yes, 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 absolutely. Very good. And what kind of graph is it? If you want to classify it, can you tell me? Tell me more about it. It's not a function. Very good. Excellent. It's not a function. Very good. It's excellent. Excellent. Okay. So he answered this question. Which of the two does not represent a function and why? Because of the vertical time, vertical line. Okay. So this is pretty much the table for the one that you're familiar with, which is y equal to x square. And this is a table for this one. So everybody see when I have y equal to negative 3, x is 9. When I have y equal to negative 2, x is 4. So it's very clear that x is equal to y square, or you can say y square equal x. So that's this graph y squared is equal to x. Now this, this graph rotated. Let me let me do it again for you. Okay, look at this graph. The graph of y equal to x squared. Look. Spin 90 degrees. What happened? Compare the two graphs. Compare the two graphs. Any difference? Yeah, they, they are identical graphs now, right? If you look at the values, they are identical, except for the label. The label is different, but they are identical, okay? So this pin change this graph into a relation. It's not a graph anymore, this one, right? So let's go ahead and try to study this one as a function, okay? Although it's not a function. The 90 degree spin changed the graph from a function that is 
for the equation y equal to x square to a relation that has equation y square equal to x. We can also conclude that y equal to plus or minus x because y square equal to x. Now you can solve this one. It will give you y equal to plus or minus square root of x, right? Yes? Good. Let's go then. Now, we're talking about the same function. Now we said we're going to change it into function, this graph. So what we can do is this is our y square equal to x. We're going to go ahead and put the table, and then now we split this into two graphs. Everybody see it? Two graphs. We, we cut it from the middle. We cut it from the x-axis. Okay, this is the x-axis. We cut it from it. We have two parts. Now, the part in the top and the part in the bottom. Now, if you can tell me the part in the top, what would equate, what kind of equation would you give it? Huh? Look, look, look. Yes, which one is it? Which one? I want to tell me why. Why is equal to what? How about this? Yes, yes, good. Y equals square root of x, right? What about the bottom one? Very good. Equals to minus square root of x. Good, good job. Good job. So, if we have y equal to if we have y squared equal to x, then it implies that there are two solutions, y equal to square root of x and y equal to negative square root of x. Correct? Yes, Shepa. Good. Good. Now, this is our graph, same graph, and we called it y squared equal to x. That's its equation, right? So, y squared equal to x, we said we can get two roots out of it y equal to square root of x and y equal to negative square root of x and this is a half that's for the y equal to square root of x and this is the other half for y equal to negative square root of x so we just took it and we broke it into two pieces now this is the piece for the positive side and this is the piece for the negative side and both of them are functions right and this one and this one also both of them will be used you'll be using for quite a bit. We're using for estimations, for uh, interpolation, and so on. But that's not now. That's a little bit later. Okay? So, let's take a look at an example. For the equation y squared equal to x, find the derivative of y with respect to x. We want to find the derivative of y with respect to x. You understand what that means, right? Okay, so let's go here and try to find the derivative. So we have y square. We've never had a y square before, right? Now we've had a y square. When we've been doing derivative, we've been looking for just y, right? But y square is just like saying, for example, cosine 2x. It's just like saying cosine or sine x plus 5. Okay, That means there is something inside in addition to the function that you know. In addition to the cosine, there is a 2 inside. In addition to this external y, there is an internal y inside. And we went through something last class. We said we, if we want to do the derivative, we, drew, we do the derivative in two stages. Can you tell me the stages? Uh -huh. We did this, uh huh. Right? We did the outside inside. Correct? So let's try to do the outside inside derivative over here, over here. The outside, for example, if I have, and we did this one, I think it was x plus uh, 5 cosine x to the power 7. How do we do this? 
we said we do the derivative of the outside so it'll be 7x plus 5 cosine x to the 7 minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the inside okay derivative of the inside which is equal to what 1 plus uh -huh, 5 sine x but the sine is going to change this sign the derivative okay to cosine good got it everybody so we're going to treat this one by the, the derivative inside and derivative outside okay let's go ahead and try to treat it that way huh okay so we're gonna say derivative of the outside is 2y derivative of the inside is dy by dx correct so this is equals to derivative of the right hand side is d by dx of x and this is equal to 1 correct d by dx of x derivative of x by itself equal to what one correct okay so now let's go ahead and divide by 2y we divide this by 2y sorry 2y we can do this one also but we don't need this one just for continuity we're doing it now if we divide then the left hand side will be what dy by dx equals to what 1 over 2y correct but then let's plug in what y is equal to if we have y square equal to x then y will be equal to what plus or minus square root of x correct okay so let's just use the plus side okay so this is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x we went ahead and we did the derivative without you know, without even touching y i mean in the sense that we did not use the value of y here in the derivative we just went derivative of the outside multiplied by derivative of the inside what do we call that derivative from derivative outside derivative inside we call it also what huh it's yeah we can call it also the composite function right the composite function because this will do the job of the two functions right so this is the job of f and this is the job of g okay they will take you to the same place this one will take you correct okay what is what is y equal to here y equal to what yeah because i have y here if i have y squared then i will just put x if i have y squared here i will put 2x i'll just put 1 over 2x correct because y squared is equal to x but i don't have y squared i have just y everybody understand this one any question yes. good let's get going then here is the solution this is solution you can follow it by itself there okay so this is the end result that we were interested in this is the end result okay this is our conclusion which is right here the second derivative or derivative of y square divided by dx d of y square divided by dx or dy square by dx equal to 1 over 2 square root of x let's keep this one in mind one more time derivative of y square equal to 
1 over 2 square root of x. Here are the two parts, the two branches of the function. And here is the original function, right? This is y squared equal to x. And this is the other one, which is the positive half, and that's the negative half, the top and the bottom. Okay? So the slope of the graph y squared equal to x is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x. Is everybody comfortable with this statement? The slope of the graph y squared equal to x is 1 over 2 square root of x. How do we find the slope of any given function? This is the equation. What do we do with the equation to get the slope? Yeah, if we if we have the points, but assume we don't have the points. I just have the equation. How am we going to get the slope? Huh? Yes, the derivative. And we just showed that the derivative of y squared is equal to 1 over 2 square root, right? Everybody? So now we have a question here. Find the point with slope equal to 1 over 4. A point in this curve using this equation okay so we know that the derivative of the equation is equal to what 1 over 2 square root of x right and we're given find the point in the curve or or on the graph of the curve find that point which will give us the slope equal to 1 over 4 so you have to solve for x what will the value of x be Huh? Everybody sees the value of x is 4? Because if you put for x 4, it will be 1 over 2 square root of 4. So square root of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? So if we, if we know that y, uh, x is equal to 4, what would the value of y be? For this graph, if x is equal to 4, what is the value of y? If x is equal to 4, what will the value of y be? Yes, 2. Yes. Yeah, let's just take the, the positive side. It's equal to 2. Good. Good. Very good. So the slope of what, the slope which we are given, 1 over 4, is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x implies x is equal to Four. If x is equal to 4, that means y is equal to 2. The point we are looking for is the point 4, comma, 2. Is that clear? Huh? Shabab. Good. Here is... Uh, this is actually, you will find it in the book... Uh, this is the same as the one we talked about, it's except that here, uh, the top part, they call it y1. y1, and this is the equation of y1, is equal to square root of x. And the bottom one, they call it y2, and it's equal to negative square root of x. And the slope over here for this curve is 1 over 2 square root of x. It's like what we have been talking about. And we have the slope at 1 over 2 y1 that means 1 over 2 square root of x y1 is just a square root so we're using this okay so this is the original equation y square equal to x and the slope over here at this point the point p of x square root of x it's the slope is equal to 1 over 2 y1 which is equal to 1 over 2 square root of x and on this side, yes, it's the same, but it's negative, okay? For Q, comma, negative square root of X. The slope will be equal to 1 over 2, Y2, which is equal to 1 over 2 square root of X in the negative, right? Everybody? So, the equation Y square equal to X, Y, y, y square minus X equal to 0, or Y square equal to X, as it's usually written, define two differential functions. 
on x interval x greater than 0. Example 1 shows how to find the derivatives of these functions without solving the equation y squared equal to x for y. We don't solve the equation for y. We don't solve the equation for what the value of y is. We're just going to go ahead and get the derivative before that. Okay, and we got the derivative before that. How do I get the derivative without even worrying about solving what x, I mean, what y is equal to? I'll just do the derivative from derivative of the outside, derivative of the inside, right? Derivative of the outside is what? 2y. Derivative of the inside is what? I just call it y prime. That's it, right? And that's equal to what? 1, right? If that's the case, then we will say y prime or the derivative is equal to what? 1 over 2 square root. No, we don't want to say square root. Why? Because over here, we said what? Without solving for the equation, right? So without solving, I'll just put what? 2y. That's it. That's what they want right here. But we went a little bit further by saying, okay, that's equal to, and now we replace the value of what? Y. We didn't solve, we just replaced the value for y. So when we solve, we got the result without even thinking about what the value of y is. Correct? Shabab, yes. when, when we got to this step, we didn't even think, and we didn't even care what the value of y is. But over here, we just plugged in the value of y. Okay? Good. Now we have a problem and it is a solution. So that will cut off the time for us. So find the slope of the circle. This is the circle. x squared plus y squared equal to 25. We want to find the slope at this specific point. We will do what? The same, right? Because this is a composite function, right? So let's just go ahead and do the derivative of the first and the derivative of the second. The derivative of the first goes the same way that we normally do the derivative of the first. The derivative of this will be equal to 2x, right? Yeah, but the derivative of this we have to do what? Go from outside, derivative of the outside multiplied by the derivative of the inside because this is composite, right? Derivative of the outside multiplied by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of the outside? 2y, very good. And what's the derivative of the inside? dy by d. So derivative of the first term plus derivative of the second term, which is 2y dy by dx equal to 0. Okay, why is it equal to 0? Because derivative of what? 25, right? These are the three. One, two, three. This is derivative of the first. This is derivative of the second equal derivative of the last which is on the other side, is equal to 0, right? Now, we want to solve for dy by dx, right? So we have what? 2y dy, this one. We take 2x on the other side. So 2y, 2y dy by dx equal to negative 2x, correct? This point. Therefore, dy by dx is equal to negative 2x divided by neg positive 2y, right? Which is equal to negative x over y, right? You can stop right here if you want to do the derivative without solving for x. But if you want to solve for x, then you have to figure out from here, right? You, if you want to solve for y. You want to solve for y, you put what? You put y squared equal to what? 25 minus x squared, right? Then y will be equal to what? The square root of what? 25 minus x squared, if you want to solve, and then plug it in here, correct? Got it, Shabab? Good. Now, the, the question that we have to answer is the following. If you look over here, we want to find the derivative at the point 3, comma, negative 4. And we found this as the derivative. Right? Isn't this the derivative? All we have to do is we have to replace x by what? 3. Right? 
x by 3 and replace y by what? Negative 4, right? So it will be negative 3 divided by negative 4 and that's going to give us what? 3 over 4. Clear, Shabab? Good. Here is the circle. And here is the point 3, comma, negative 4. Okay. And here is the value of y2, which is the one in the bottom. Okay. y2 equal to negative square root of 25 minus x squared. And here is the slope, negative x over y. And when you plug in these values, on the slope, it will give you the slope 3 over 4, which is the same thing that we did. So the circle combines the graphs of two functions. The graph of y2 is the lower semicircle and passes through the point 3 comma negative 4, this one. Okay. The, the yellow semicircle is the positive side because we have 3 and negative 4. Negative 4 is the y equal to negative 4. y equal to negative 4 is in the, in the lower hemisphere here, on this side. Okay. And the other one is in the top, you know, hemisphere or hemicircle or semicircle. Okay? Okay, Shabab, got it? Question? No question? It's time now we call the derivative we've been doing for a long time as the implicit differentiation, which we called differentiate from outside and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now, what we will be doing is we will call it from now on implicit differentiation. So we have to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, treating y as a differentiable function of x. And then after that, we're going to collect the terms with dy by dx on one side of the equation and solve for dy by dx. Let's take a look at the example here. Example 3 says find dy by dx if y square equal to x square plus sine xy. So all we got to do is we have to differentiate both sides. The left hand side, which is y square, we're going to do the implicit differentiation. So y square will be, the derivative will be 2y, y prime, which is right here, equals, and the derivative of x square is 2x. And then derivative of sine xy, we will also do the implicit differentiation. That means differentiate the whole and then the differentiate the argument, what is inside. So derivative of sine xy will be equal to cosine xy, which is the whole, and then derivative of the argument, the argument is xy. Derivative of xy will be given by y plus xy prime. Now we can just go ahead and rearrange the right hand side. So we'll have 2yy prime equal to 2x plus then we take cosine xy multiplied by y we get y cosine xy and then cosine xy multiplied by xy prime will give us xy prime cosine xy and then we have to collect the terms that have y prime so y prime is right here we have to take it to the left hand side if we do then we will have 2y y prime minus xy prime cosine xy equals to 2x plus y cosine xy. Now we can go ahead and take y prime as a factor. We factor it outside and then we'll be remaining with 2y minus x cosine xy. And this is equal to 2y 2x. This equals to 2x plus y cosine xy. Now we can divide this parenthesis divide by this parenthesis so y prime will be equals to 2x plus y cosine xy divided by 2y minus x cosine xy and that is the derivative that we were trying to get to
the equation we found the derivative of in the last example is repeated over here y square equal to x square plus sine xy this was the first one that we dealt with we're calling it implicit differentiation if you remember just the last slide the curve for this particular equation is in blue this is the curve of the equation and this is pretty much the graph just for you to know what kind of graph it has now we will do example four example four is about finding the second derivative wow second derivative of 2x cubed minus 3y square equal to 8 to do so we have to take the derivative of both sides the left side and the right hand side so derivative of the left hand side d by dx of 2x is cubed minus 3y square equals to 8 implies we get the derivative of the first term which will be 3 times 2 x squared that's going to be 6 x squared minus this is implicit differentiation so it's going to be minus 6 y y prime which is minus 6 y y prime equals to derivative of 8 is 0 so equal to 0 now we have this 6 x squared minus 6 y y prime equal to 0 we can rearrange them since this is equal to 0 we can just put this term on the left hand side and put the 6x squared on the right hand side it doesn't matter it doesn't change anything now we have to divide by 6y both sides if we do then we're going to get y prime on the left hand side and the right hand side will be 6x squared divided by 6y which is equal to x to the power 2 divided by y now we can perform the second derivative as follows y prime prime is equal to d by dx of y prime but this is y prime which is x squared divided by y for this we use for this derivative we use the quotient rule so from the quotient rule we will get 2xy minus x squared y prime divided by y squared and that we could go ahead and arrange it as follows by plugging in y prime we know that y prime is equal to what y prime is equal to x squared over y so we'll just go ahead and replace y prime by x squared over y now we have to multiply the numerator and denominator by y if we multiply numerator by y then this y will disappear and this y will be y squared so 2xy squared and this y will be disappearing and we'll have x squared times x squared which will give us minus x to the power 4 and when we do when we multiply the denominator also by y, we'll get y cube. And that's the answer. Now we will do example 5. Example 5 is a little bit different than the examples that we went through, but it's a, a, a new concept, so let's learn the new concept. In example 5, we're supposed to do the following. Show that the point 2 comma 4 lies on the curve x cube plus y cube minus 9xy equal to 0. Then find the tangent are normal to the curve there, which is figure 3.33. Okay, we will show figure 3.33 after we finish. So to check if a point is on a curve, we solve the equation using the points as follows. So we have x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy equals 2 we plug in the value of x which is 2 so it will be 2 cube plus the value of y which is 4 4 cube instead of y cube then minus 9 multiplied by xy this is the value of x this is the value of y equals to 8 plus 64 plus 8 plus 64 minus 72 and that's equal to 0 so that proves it you want to prove it in a different way we can also use we can also replace every x in the equation by 2 and then solve the remaining for the y value of y solve for the value of y so we're just going to go ahead and take this equation and plug in instead of x plug in 2 so the first item will give me 2 to the power 3 which is right here and we leave y cube alone so it's right there untouched 
and then I have minus 9xy. We said we have to replace x, so x is equal to 2. So minus 9y becomes minus 18y, which is right here, minus 18y equals to 0. Now we can be assured that that implies that y cube minus 18y plus 8 equal to 0. Where did we get f from? 2 to the power 3. So that's our 8 to the power 3. So this equation we have to solve. y cubed minus 18y plus 8 equal to 0. We're just going to go ahead and rearrange this. We have 18 minus 18y. So we're going to subtract from y cubed 16y. And then we're going to keep the 2y and subtract from it 8. If you rearrange, you'll get the same. This is equal to 0. The only way that both, both parentheses the what is over inside to be equal to 0 for both of them y must be equal to 4 if y is equal to 4 here we get 2 times 4 minus 8 which is 0 and if y is equal to 4 over here on the left hand side we'll get 64 minus 16 times 4 is also 64 64 minus 64 so that's the only way to solve this and what we did is we just took y outside and then inside we have y square minus 16 and then minus 2 outside it will be y minus 4 equal to 0. The only way that we get a 0 from subtractions of these two is that this must be equal to 0 to kill the 2. So y equal to 4 minus 4 equal to 0 it kills the 2 and then y squared y is equal to 4 so y squared is equal to 16 minus 16 equal to 0 it will kill that one. So we'll get 0. So that improves that this point lies on the curve. So the only way for the left hand side to be equal to 0 is 1y equal to 4 as required. Now we're going to go ahead and do example for example 5. We're going to show the figure that I promised, which is figure 3.333. And then when we show the figure, which is right here, uh, we're going to have to answer this, which says example 5 shows how to find the equation for the tangent and normal to the folium of the discretes at 2 comma 4. Okay, so this is this is our curve and this is the tangent and this is the slope and this is the equation for our curve. So to find the slope at this particular time which this particular point which is x equal to 2 and y equal to 4. This is what we will do. The slope of the tangent at 2 comma 4 is given as follows. This equation we just have to do the derivative as we got used to and we did before. So 3x squared plus 3y squared y prime minus 9y minus 9xy prime must be equal to 0. If that is the case then we will have 3 y square y prime minus 9 x y prime equals to 9 y minus 3 x square. All what we did is we looked at the terms that have y prime, we collected them on one side. So we collected them on one side and then we left the terms that do not have y prime on the other side. Now we have to take y prime outside so y prime outside we will have 3y square minus 9x okay, on the left hand side and that's equal to the right hand side which is the same. And then from this we can divide by 3y square minus 9x the left hand side and right hand side and we will be left with y prime on the left hand side and that's equal to 9y minus 3x squared divided by 3y squared minus 9x. Now that we have these values, this is y prime. We want to find the slope. We want to find the numerical value of the slope. So we have to plug in the point 2 comma 4. 2 comma 4, we have to use it. So instead of every x, we put 2. And instead of every y, we put 4. If we do so, then the numerator will give us what? 9 multiplied by 4 instead of y minus 3 multiplied by x squared. x is equal to 2, x squared is equal to 4. Minus 3 multiplied by 4 divided by 
3 multiplied by y squared, y is equal to 4, 3 multiplied by y squared is same as 3 multiplied by 16, minus 9 multiplied by x, x is equal to 2, so 9 multiplied by 2. If you do the math, you'll get 24 over 30, and if you just cross out the 6 on the top, 6 on the bottom, you will get 4 over 5. So 4 over 5, 4 over 5 is the slope of the tangent, and we know that the normal slope is just the negative of the reciprocal of the tangent, that's uh, the slope of the normal, is negative of the reciprocal of the tangent. So the tangent is 4 over 5, so we have to get the reciprocal of the tangent, and then we have to multiply it by negative 1. So this is the slope of the normal, negative 5 over 4. And like I said, the slope of the tangent is 4 over 5, as we have proved over here. That's it for now, and that's it for this video. And uh, please stay healthy, and we will finish the video on chapter 3 next video.